Good morning, YouTube. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to be a YouTuber, the biggest YouTuber in the world, how to conquer YouTube and the algorithm and beat everybody and everything. And all you have to do is subscribe to my simple program of 19... Oh, you don't have to do any of that kind no, of stuff. No, okay. But when we were starting this YouTube channel, yeah. on the new channel, I would get pop-ups, little screens, of people telling me how to YouTube. I think it's a natural thing for the algorithm to show you when you have a new channel right. of how to do it. And a lot of them are smaller channels, and a lot of them were kind of strange, weird tips, and a lot of them were sort of mirroring the Mr. Beastification yeah. of YouTube mm -hmm. and suggesting to go that route. Basically, sort of thinking as a thumbnail first, and then the content. Right. And a lot of bad advice. But I feel like you've kind of went through the trial and error. Like you've actually done it Correct. and say, this doesn't work, this works, this works, this so, doesn't work. I thought I would do my own video giving my own advice, number one, to you, because mm -hmm. you are now a YouTuber now. Uh, kind of. She won't admit probably. to being a YouTuber. <laughs> you are a YouTuber now, yeah. and also because I have been doing it now for eight years. And in that time, I have made, I can't believe it, I've made about $5 million on YouTube. You're, seriously? I know, all the money's gone. I spent it all on the cars. It's all gone somewhere. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, yeah, really? I went and looked, and holy crap. I mean, there's sponsors, and right. then there's AdSense, right. of course, what YouTube pays out. But yeah. My career has... Well, it's interesting yeah. because you keep telling me, because I come from this broadcasting world where, you know, I'm waiting for somebody to hire me. I'm waiting for the program director to look at me and be like, okay, we need her on our program. Where you're always like, let's start our own thing. Let's do our own thing. You'll be your own boss. And I'm like, I don't know if that works. I don't know. Like, I, I need to be on TV or right. whatever to be successful. And it's just like, there was a big obviously push not. And like Steve Yante was another person that we work with at Barrett Jackson. Yeah. And uh, he was very bitter a few years ago when his show on Motor Trend got canceled. Right. I felt kind of bad because I had a show on Motor Trend that got picked up another season when his didn't. And he was lamenting. I was like, well, it doesn't matter. Just start a YouTube channel. Yeah. Just do it. Mm -hmm. And it took about a year of me just like, do it, do it, do it. To mm -hmm. where now he is. Right. And he's making a good living yeah. just on that. Oh, and yeah. still doing absolutely what he loves. He loved doing the junkyard videos mm -hmm. for Motor Trend. Now he's doing it for himself. He can do it whatever way he wants. And uh, he is going to be back in the junkyard very soon. He did have his health issues, but now uh, mm -hmm. doing much better. We spoke to him a few times. Right. Uh, but now it's you, and Happy. I want to help all of you <laughs> with my tips. You have tips. Very much so. Okay, Tyler's tips. And they aren't going to be the Mr. B style tips. There's plenty of people out there saying, you know, make these crazy thumbnails and then start your video with the big attention grabber. I built the world's largest toilet. And let's go see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm joking. There's a video where a guy just says, I built the world's largest toilet. I would watch it. It's the same way with Mr. Beast. In like the first five words, we're going to do this and this and this and you need to watch it. Right. I mean, it works. Do you think there is sort of a formula though for YouTube and the algorithm or how Very works? much. Yeah. But... That avenue of viral content that way to younger people, to that lowest common denominator, is so saturated. If you're going to try and do that, there's too many people doing it. Right. You will never get right. seen. And that's what I want to focus on is finding your niche. And mine is not that complicated. So let me show you my bag of tricks right here. Okay. So, eight years of YouTubing. Mm -hmm. It has changed very, very little. And that's just my underwear, but we were on a <laughs> trip recently. Where's the stuff? Oh um, he packs go? very light. Where did it go? Ah, oh, here we go. So, I have, for all my YouTube videos, right. a GoPro. Mm -hmm. A ancient camcorder that always works. Mm -hmm. I hit a button and it goes. It stays in focus. It doesn't screw up. It's not anything fancy. I just hit a button. And it records. How many times do you think you've dropped it? Well, I've gone through three or four okay. in eight years, so they're yeah. pretty sturdy. They're sturdy. But, uh, and a lot. You, did you say this one was caught in the rain? That one got caught in the rain recently. Does it still work? Uh, it still works, okay. yes. And my final bag oh, of tricks yeah. is this audio right here. It is a hard wired audio recorder. We use wireless with Good Morning YouTube because we have Jake looking in, making sure the audio levels right. are good. But when you're on your own, I don't trust it. Right. So this has its own memory card. It's wired straight in. With the crappy audio from yeah. one of these two, I'm able to sync the audio when I well, need it. Well, and that will ruin your whole shoot. Because if you have to reshoot something because the audio is messed up, the second time you shoot it, it's just, it's not authentic. Even though if you plan on what you're going to say, right. just in the moment, to recreate that moment, like, you're not an actor, you're a real person. And that's the whole point, I feel like, about YouTube, is that you're a real person. And if your audio gets jacked up and you have to reshoot, it's just not going to be authentic. It's yes. not going to be the same. It's really focusing on the content and not the quality. And you could really get rid of all of this and just... Your iPhone. Yeah. 
do all of it. All the car wizard stuff, because the GoPro gets a little, oh, it's Sorry, sucking cup of <laughs> The GoPro gets a little weird in the light at the car wizards. Uh, this one, it's a little unstable for walking around with, and it doesn't do a very wide angle. The, this modern iPhone, mm -hmm. and I just use the audio straight from this. Right, but you do set wizard. it up to do a wide shot. I do set it up to right. do a wide shot. But on the iPhone. I, I could do it all on my iPhone. Mm -hmm. Now, recently, I have changed a little bit. Jake has come on board to help us with Good Morning YouTube, and I've tried to up the quality of my channel a little bit yeah. with some beauty shots and things. In the past, I played with drones and all that stuff, so there's there's a little bit more quality than that. But we're talking almost eight years, and all of these cars, yeah. and everything I've done on this. Right. I focused very, very little on the quality of of the content as far as the production value right. and things, and just mostly on the content. Well, and I've, I've seen some of your videos where there's a little more production that goes into it, may not sometimes do as well as, you know, videos that you shot in 20 minutes, took you 10 minutes to edit, and it's just very raw and rugged and, and it's real, and you never know, or I feel like you never know really what's gonna do well. Exactly, so my biggest tip that mm -hmm. I can give, mm -hmm. forget all this stuff, just find that niche. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to use some examples other than me. My niche was hoopties. Right. I would buy what once was a nice car. Right. For very, very cheap. Mm -hmm. And then going through the process, even though I'm not that handy in using a mechanic, but documenting the process with a mechanic or a little bit myself or mm -hmm. whatever, of bringing that car back as much as I can to what it was when new or failing or... Right. It was a unique thing where mm -hmm. I said, I bought the cheapest Porsche 911 in the USA. Right. I bought the cheapest so-and-so. It's been copied a lot now. Sure. A lot of people are doing it. Yeah. But I kind of feel like if I wasn't the first, I was one of the first. Yeah. What made you start introing it the way you do? The dumbest automotive channel on all of YouTube? <laughs> I really don't know. Because it was I was making really dumb decisions on yeah. purpose. Okay. And my background as a used car dealer and being in the car business for 10 years, all that experience with these cars made it much easier for me to do this. So I'd already been there, done that with so many. Mm -hmm. And when I failed in the past, it meant a loss when it came time to flip the car when right. I was a car dealer and it was a terrible thing. But with YouTube, when it's something terrible and it's worse, it's great because it means <laughs> right. more content. So right. I'm in this position I can't lose and and it's been it's been fun. Right. Was sure. there a certain point or a particular video that just kind of launched you and you took off with? Uh, so Super Bowl weekend 2017 mm -hmm. when I documented the ownership process of a 2007 Mercedes S600, mm -hmm. which I bought for 4500 bucks. Right. Uh, wow. I had a bad motor, uh, swapping all that out, the cost mm -hmm. of doing it, and then how amazing of a car that I had for a fraction of the price. Basically right. the DNA of what I have now, but it was the first one. It got posted uh, five days prior did average, right. and then for whatever reason, over the weekend, five days later, on Super Bowl weekend, hmm. I'm kind of half watching the Super Bowl, half watching the analytics, things, thinking something's broken. Right. I think that's still my most watched video of like four or five million yeah. or something like and that. And is there like certain keywords, or what What do you feel like mm -mm. helps videos do the best, or is there just like magic and you never really know? Uh, well, I would say there's some level of consistency where people know what they're coming to your channel right. for, and... Yeah, I suppose I found the niche with that Mercedes. Right. And I've done a lot of Mercedes videos since. They've always been strong for yeah. me. But it's also something I'm really passionate about. Know really well. Because before that, I was like the section president of the Mercedes Men's Club of America. I knew the cars really mm -hmm. well. So that knowledge base uh, helped me a lot. But mm -hmm. it's not just cars. So I like two car examples that I give of really fast growing YouTube channels. Whistling Diesel's right. obviously one. He does it by being irreverent and just destroying things. Mm -hmm. And you know, really sticking a middle finger to everybody and the critics and all the people who are mad about him destroying cars and embracing them and sort of ridiculing them. So the people that hate him want to watch to see what he's doing next. The people that want to watch him to right. see what he's doing right. next. And, and just making insane event-style content where you can't miss a Whistle and Diesel video. And he's just had insane growth from that. From Do you not feel caring. like there's so many copycats and people that just kind of follow that formula? I don't think it's a good way to start a YouTube channel. Yeah. I think, you know, he got started with his diesel trucks building his giant mm -hmm. Duramax and, of course, the diesel bros and all that stuff right. sort of followed him. But then he started doing that. Right. But one person that has had amazing growth doing the opposite of just having that a great personality or that unique personality, but then actually building and creating things. Weston Champlin, mm -hmm. who is a Kansas YouTuber who, when I met years ago, was 10% of the subscribers as me. Yeah. And the moment I met him, the first thing I said to him, you were going to pass me really quickly. But how did you know? What because was it about him? his personality, he is so funny. He yeah. is like a comedian, the whole blue collar comedy hour. Right. In one person. Sure. Always has these one-liners. Also a very talented builder. Mm-hmm. 
those two things. Well, I feel like there's a running theme with it's you're real. You're actually a car builder. You actually know a lot about cars. You mm -hmm. sold, you know, you're a used car dealer. And so when you're authentic and when you're real on these YouTube channels, that's what's successful. You know, when you're hired as a broadcaster, you know, maybe you're not an expert in football or in hockey or, or whatever right. kind of genre you go in because some executive thinks you have the right look and you can talk on camera. But YouTube, you're authentically really an expert. And the mm -hmm. audience decides that. Not some program director that steps in and say, oh, let's hire Tyler Hoover. That's what the success is. It's yeah. the numbers yeah. of actually watching Tyler's channel or whoever's channel it is. And that's the true key of success is is. Your I suppose, but it, it can also be purely personality driven, which I feel like Whistling Diesel, yes, he builds things, but I don't think he personally builds things or is that mechanically inclined similar to me. He has mm -hmm. people do a lot of it. So it, it's personality driven mm -hmm. to where, look, he's at 6.79 million subscribers. Wow. He destroyed some cars, his Ferrari burned to the ground, his G-Wagon burned to the ground. He was able to sell them off in these cases, like chips of them, mm -hmm. and made a fortune doing that for his Christmas thing. But Weston, look at it, in such a short time, three million subscribers. That's great. Personality, skill. That's the American dream, the and new it, American dream right there. I follow other <laughs> YouTube channels, it's not just cars, and one other really fast growing one is called Wristwatch Revival, mm -hmm. and this guy, he's a watchmaker, but he's not a professional one. He started as an amateur just an enthusiast and learned the skills right. over time, and he has followers and customers send him watches that he repairs. That's great. And he does these deep dive videos with a couple of nice cameras, and you can tell that he narrates it afterwards. So he documents the whole process mm -hmm. of rebuilding, say, a Rolex that was found in a drawer that was their grandfather's, or you know, one that was in an accident, or you know, found at the bottom of the ocean, or something like that, and going through and fixing it. Mm -hmm. And then you know, his little personality and quirks and things here and there as he's talking about it, giving tips and things. A unique channel, once again, based on skill. Right. Which I feel like is similar to Wizard's channel, where he has customers bring their merchandise mm -hmm. to the shop, and he goes through them and reviews them. Yeah, but you don't have to be like an expert watchmaker mm -hmm. or ten years in the car business, right. or you know, if you are an enthusiast about something, mm -hmm. you can grow a YouTube channel really fast. And one example I wanted to give of another one, almost at a million subscribers, is Nerdrotic. Okay. Yeah. So his background, he owned a comic book shop for a while. Oh, that's great. But he's mostly just a movie and TV critic. Mm -hmm. Like we recently reviewed the recent Marvel movie, right. Captain Marvel 2 or whatever it was, it's terrible. That's what he does. Okay. So all of this garbage coming out of movies and TV mm -hmm. right now. The the woke stuff, he does go a little bit on the political bent there right. when it comes to that kind of thing. But mostly focusing on why are studios focusing on an agenda more than making it entertaining. Of course. And he, it's, he's just a drumbeat of that, right. a, a critic Well, like and this. it's nice to have a real person talking because now you can read all these reviews on movies to see if you want to see it, but then all of a sudden these are all fake reviews because they're written a little too perfectly, so it's nice to actually go to a human being and hear their opinion about the movie. Right, but he's... A middle-aged guy, mm -hmm. he's never worked in the movies or mm -hmm. had any professional experience in it. Being a comic book guy in that background, he's a fan of the genre right. and he's just really frustrated about what they're doing with right. these characters and other things that he just tangentially wants to cover right. and just him sitting and ranting right. and you know editing with some good b-roll and some strong thumbnails. Yeah. Huge. So, so he's gone from under 100,000 subscribers to almost a million I'd say in the span of less than two years right. I've been following. Right. So yep. your first tip is find your niche. Mm -hmm. Your second tip, you keep talking about thumbnails. Mm -hmm. Tell me like what should go into a thumbnail? What does that even mean? Well, so YouTube used to reward total clickbait. Yeah. To where you could put a thumbnail of anything and if people clicked on it and watched it then you'd get the views. But now the thumbnail Yes, it needs to be attention grabbing, but it also needs to be related to okay. the video in some way. So what to where people if are clicking not? and it has nothing to do with it, they click off. So when it but let's say it doesn't line up, does does YouTube take that video down? No, it just it buries it. It okay. suppresses it because they realize, okay, people are clicking on this video, but then they're not watching it because it's total garbage right. people aren't watching it. So they have their watch time and their click through rate, they can have that metric of success. Okay. It's not just views anymore. How long people are watching the video right. and how often when they show it on that screen of all those little tiles, mm -hmm. do they click on it, your click-through rate. Those are the two big metrics for success. Yeah. But what do you want in that thumbnail? I would say whatever the subject of the video is and 
whatever you think is going to grab. And a lot of people put their faces in going. <laughs> like we do, and a lot of people do, a lot of YouTubers do. But then there's it's, also writing. Sometimes you see writing on the thumbnail, mm -hmm. sometimes you don't. What is that? My point thumbnails that? have been very consistent, and it's always car, me, text. Right. Very little deviation from that, mm -hmm. because they can see, oh, that's Hoobie's garage style of video. Mm -hmm. So I would say a style of thumbnail is kind of important. Right. Uh, you know, Doug DeMiro, every single one of his videos is this. You know, he's <laughs> standing next to it. Trying to copy someone else's. I don't, mm -hmm. I mean, it would maybe give you a little bit in the short term, like everybody's copying Mr. Beast thumbnails or whatever. Yeah. But I, I don't think that's the way to go, right. just personally. Right. I think it's just too saturated. Yeah. Uh, and now, I just don't want to point out big YouTubers because there are smaller YouTubers that, you know, say you're not looking to do this for a living, mm -hmm. like me or now, mm -hmm. you, know, you. I'm a YouTuber, maybe. <laughs> it, it's, if it's just a passion right. or a hobby, and you want to show it to people and also, you know, maybe fund your hobby a little bit. Mm -hmm. it, it's definitely doable. There right. are tons of people. There's more YouTube channels like that than larger million plus subscriber YouTube channels. Right. And that's the great thing about this new form of media. Nobody's watching TV anymore. Uh, there's not going to be these big, massive mm -hmm. movie stars and TV stars anymore. The cast of Friends is the cast of Friends forever. There won't be that ever right. again. Game of Thrones maybe the last one where everybody knows mm -hmm. it's Game of Thrones. But... I, there's not going to be shows right. like that ever right. again. They're, they're all going to be fans of YouTubers. And car guys know mm -hmm. the car YouTubers. Mm -hmm. Makeup people know the makeup YouTubers. I have no idea who they are. Yeah. All, like, it, it's all <laughs> in, in this genre. So, like, smaller YouTubers, like like our producer, Jake. 100% mm -hmm. Jake. Oh, yeah. He is one where he is staying in the vein of hoopties and absolute garbage and stumbling through with the resources that he has to, to get through it. Right. And oftentimes successfully, but sometimes not. And you just don't know, like if you look through his channel mm -hmm. here, whoa, whatever he is working on, those are great thumbnails. He can make a video. Well, yeah, whoa, that's <laughs> kind of why I hired him. You look so he professional, Jake. <laughs> but the the concept itself is not that unique, right? But it is unique to him because right. of his personality, sort right. of willing it to like, God, this car is just murdering me everything's breaking right. i'm so unlucky it's yeah. like like why does all this bad stuff happen but right. here i am going to get through it right and but it's it's relatable which is yeah. what i love about so many youtubers is that this their real personality it's their real there's no time constraints right. and you have to fit this thought in 30 seconds you could just keep on going there's but then you look at like PT the person. niches the weird little like a, a saturn sl right Who's doing videos on Saturn? Nobody. SL? Everybody remembers Saturn and May has a story about Saturn, yeah. but nobody's doing videos on them. So he gets a Saturn SL. Yeah. He gets views on a car that costs nothing, right. a, a PT Cruiser. Right. It costs nothing. And then, you know, random little human stories like like the boat. <laughs> and it, whoa, what's the cat doing? What is her? Hi, Neelix. Hi. He's a, Neelix she, is a fan of Jake as well. She but loves like Jake. the boat at his family's lake house that's been sitting for years as a grandfather's yeah. boat and going through and trying to revive that. Uh, a big thing for Jake because it's it's a personality type thing. Like here's something unique, a vintage ski boat. Mm -hmm. That's cool. People want to watch it. I'm going to get this going again. Another genre that's pretty common like this boat's been sitting, this car's been sitting for a very long time. Let's see if I can get it running. Right. But then the personal aspect of Jake's history within everything else made it very compelling content. And uh, I believe it succeeded your subscriber base, I think, in the views. Yeah. yeah. So stuff like that. Yeah. Jake is a good example. But it's not just cars. I want to give other non-car right. examples. So one is Retro Badger Gaming. Oh, yeah. He plays my favorite video game of all time, Star Trek Bridge Commander, the only realistic Star Trek simulator that does uh, 3D flying. Mm -hmm. So most space games, it's up, down, yeah. left, like you can't do that. In space, you know, you can go wherever you want. And this is the only game where it lets you do any kind of axis. It's three-dimensional, it's a grid, it's not flat. And it was the best space battle game of all time. People have modded the heck right. out of it, put in all kinds of ships. I used to play it all the time. I haven't played it since Liam was born, almost four years ago. Right. My son, I, just, I don't have time for video games. But I get my fix by watching him. Sure, of And course. every day or twice a day, he posts a video of just him playing video games. And he's a massive Star Trek nerd. Right. And all these people are modding the game. So when they put up a new ship to try out, he tries it out or he sets up a scenario that's in one of the movies or one of the TV shows and sees how it work out. Or, you know, cross-genre, they also have different uh, 
John, like Stargate, um, Star Wars, they're putting in different ships into the same software setup with, with Bridge Commander. Well, I think the, the biggest YouTube channels are ones that are people playing video games and then kids are just watching it. And it's those are the biggest thing, which is what this is. But nobody was, maybe people did one episode yeah. on those bigger channels focusing on these vintage uh, sci-fi games. But this guy pretty much devotes himself mm -hmm. to it, occasionally going uh, somewhere else. But just recreating a simulated battle between two ships from an episode or whatever he can creatively come up with. He's a big Star Trek fan mm -hmm. and has a lot of knowledge from the episodes and they'll put in little Easter eggs of funny lines and things. And it's really good. And you know, he doesn't get a ton of views per video, right. but you see some of them have close to 100,000 views and he's posting two a day. So I imagine he's making probably three to five thousand dollars a month right, which just, is great just screen recording Doing, video games making yeah. you know with some a decent microphone and posting it up and uh you know, and shares his fandom on top of that it's so. doing something that you love every day which doesn't feel like work right. when you're doing something that you love well, i'm sure he has a day job or does something and then just does that for fun well, on the so side you're talking about him posting all twice a day which is something i'm really impressed with you because there's times where you're not feeling good or it's just not convenient to shoot something and you're very adamant about we need to get a video out we need to get a video out the cat hair is <laughs> unbelievable. a blizzard of cat hair oh my <laughs> Wow. Um, yeah, I'm going to get to that in a little bit as far as the consistent posting and things. But one other example that I wanted to give was man carrying thing. Mm. And this is just a guy that is I just seeing guy. the world around him, mm -hmm. sort of like a comedian, mm -hmm. and, and just observing it. Right. And it's mostly short videos that are maybe a minute, two minutes long, reacting to YouTube things and changes and someone being ridiculous or whatever. It, it's a one man like low tech skit comedy show and you can see uh 380,000 subscribers so i guess he's a medium sized youtuber but it's just one man just right. thinking up like oh this is funny i can make a little skit on this and he's just basically making his own memes that's great and reacting to the world around us yeah. and, and i i really enjoy his content but this isn't like he's a trained actor no. or any kind of uh, knowledge before any of that kind of stuff. Right. Just somebody with a personality, right. just a natural sense of humor, and, and just putting out videos that well, and there's he thinks. A, there's are, a trick to editing things, and you do need to learn. I know there's a few people that we know that are mm -hmm. saying, oh, I'm going to start a channel, I'm going to start a podcast, and there's, oh, I can't use the first one I shot, I can't use the second one I shot, because there's a learning curve on how to edit and edit timing and perhaps lighting and, and your backgrounds or your content, and you just kind of learn, but just jumping into it and getting started is probably the hardest part. Like you said about C. Mignante, you mm -hmm. took about, what, uh, six months to a year to convince right. him to start well, his channel. Well, and because he didn't have a, a tech background, so he, like, I, I can't film and edit, so he did get uh, someone, I think he traded, like a, a kid named Shane, who yeah. worked at a car dealership yeah. uh, that he was involved with. He would borrow him for one day to go film videos and then edit for him, and then I, I forget whatever deal he made, but uh, that way he could do it. And your jacket's going to get ruined by this little guy. So um, back to what you were talking about with consistent posting. That's that's what I've done. That's right. what a lot of people have done, where they want to post one, two, three videos a right. week, no matter what. Doug right. DeMiro, so many people have these certain days that they post for Four years straight, I probably posted on Wednesday, Fridays without fail. Right. But you have to have an entrepreneurial mindset to do that. You know, yes. it's not like your boss tells you you have to be at work at 9 a.m. every single day. You have to tell yourself, I need to wake up. I need to get this done day after day after day because there's a million excuses on why maybe you want to mm -hmm. stay in bed today. You're not feeling good. You have a cold. There's a million things you could think of, and you just have to keep on pushing that out. Right. So the starting out. You have to be willing to do something for nothing. Yeah. And that's that's the thing. I was lucky because I started writing uh, articles for Auto Trader. So I was getting paid $100, $150 to write articles for Auto Trader and then was making videos with it. So um, my first car that I bought, thinking for YouTuber for content and Acura NSX, uh, I had to finance the whole thing. My car payment, I don't know, $500 a month, something like that. Mm -hmm. I was hoping that the articles in the YouTube would make the car payment. Right. That was the goal. Right. And it, it, it certainly did. Yeah. Um, so I had that head start where I was getting paid to write articles for Auto Trader. Uh, but you do have to start making videos and making no money in it. So with my really, really bad way of YouTubing where I have to buy the car's experience and lose all mm -hmm. this money, that's why I'm like, oh my God, I make that much money on YouTube? And then I like, because I, I have no money. It's like, yeah. well, where, maybe I should have thought about retirement or uh, something because it's... Uh, <laughs> He's definitely not in the bank right, right. now. There, but there's some nice this, hoopies out there, but... but um, Any business that you start, you're not going to make money in the beginning. And you're going right. to be in the red for a while until you start making money. So I think 
I think thinking I need to post a video a week mm -hmm. is a good idea to start. Right. Uh, but there's certainly exceptions to that. I talked about Whistling Diesel. Every mm -hmm. time he posts a video, it's an event. He'll go uh, six, eight weeks without posting. Uh, Tavarish is another example mm -hmm. where he was posting consistently like me. He had less subscribers than me. Mm -hmm. And he switched his content strategy from I'm posting a video twice a week no matter what and maybe it's sort of mediocre to I'm only going to post when it's an event and right. it's a big deal right. and there is some progress. Well, he's and definitely then, a big deal now. <laughs> and so, yeah, he's flown past me in subscribers. When he posts a video, we need to watch this Tavares video. Right. It is an event. And if it's two months between posting right. a video, he doesn't care because it needs to be top tier, Huge. high quality stuff. Tanner Braungard is another Kansas YouTuber. Mm -hmm. Went from daily vlogging as right. a kid, getting burned out from that. And now he could go back to vlogging, mm -hmm. uh, but he won't. He started a second channel for vlogs when he wants. He will only post when it is an event. Mm -hmm. It is a big deal. I did something amazing right. and you need to see it. Right. But then there's me, mm -hmm. there's Doug DeMiro, there's mm -hmm. plenty of other people mm -hmm. where consistent content. Right. Ben Wiki posting five days a week, no matter what. Once again, he was smaller than me in subscribers. Yeah. Now he is way past yeah. me in that consistent drum beat five days a week, no yeah. matter what, yeah. so, which was our plan before you got hurt. We're, we're got back on track now here. Jacked up a little bit. Now, what do you think about time frame, like keeping the video at five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes? Is there any like magic trick to that? The only thing about the longer the video, the longer the watch time can be, and then the monetization of it, if you ever end up getting monetized, which there's a certain threshold now. Back when I was doing it, there wasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but then you can start putting in mid-rolls, and you make more money on longer videos, for sure. If mm -hmm. people are watching, if it's good, if you're just putting in filler and then getting to the action, getting to what the video is about, mm -hmm. you're not gonna get, you're not gonna win from that. Right. So it's gonna be as long as it can, but still as engaging as possible. Mm -hmm. I hope that's helpful to you all. And the right. other thing I can think of is when something works, run with it. So right. with me, buying the cheapest whatever, whatever, whatever works. And when I try something else, it doesn't. Right. So when I do something weird and different, yeah, every, once in a while I'll do something weird and different. But if something works, run with it. Uh, like Jake, I would have said, uh, keep messing with boats. Right. Because I did well. Keep going right. with the boats. Right. And I mean, obviously he's doing it what he wants to do with mm -hmm. his content. It's always different. But there was, there was a big wave with that, you know, and then you could have... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, good. There's a big wave with that. You could have continued, you know. Um, yeah, but who knows? It might not have. You just you really don't know. It's a shot in the dark. Right. As far as and like happens. my mistake, um, I could have rode the wave of EVs. Right. So I had the big bump with the Ford Lightning pickup mm -hmm. truck. The Tesla stuff was doing very well. Since it's not in my comfort zone in my wheelhouse, I don't know the cars that well. Right. Um, I would go back to hoopties and depreciated exotics and Mercedes and things when I could have continued driving. The, I could have gotten rid of the Lightning, yeah. got a Rivian. Mm -hmm. I could have tried other electric vehicles out and the ownership experience and, you know, like a, a $1,000 Nissan Leaf or something. You know, there's there's plenty of junky EVs right. out there. I could right. have kept with the theme and I didn't. And I think that was a mistake on my part right. because now it's been over a year since I had the Ford Lightning. I think Lightning, you're doing so. pretty good. Are we allowed to tell about your... Tesla? Certainly, yeah. There's a Cybertruck <laughs> order whenever I get it. I'm very excited. Well, they sent you an the email Cybertruck. saying the delivery will be before yes. March. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty soon. That is pretty soon and hopefully it does well. But and that's the other thing. Like you're chasing cloud, chasing views, trying to get that algorithm to right. click. Do what you like. Yeah. And post what you like, what you think is interesting. And like I just do what I like. Do mostly. you think YouTube stops the algorithm push once you hit a certain amount of subscribers? They're like, oh, they're at 100 uh, or a million subscribers. We're going to slow them down I, I, as far I as promoting know. them. I mean, I look at a lot of other car YouTube channels and there is a big gap. I think there's plenty of 1 million to 2 million subscriber mm -hmm. car channels. Uh, there's not a lot getting into that upper echelon. So the yeah. car audience is just there's that audience. Right. Uh, there, so certainly, like Chris Fix is at 10 million subscribers. They're very close. There, mm -hmm. there, there's plenty of exceptions where they've gotten more mainstream. Uh, but as far as like the hardcore car guys, that, that seems to be where most of them are at. Yeah. Right? And I'm very happy there. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that inspires you or gives you some kind of uh, Yeah, tell your boss I, I quit and shove it and start your own YouTube no. channel. No, do, do not. Do it. Do not. Do you it know, right Stratman now. lived out of his car for years and now look at him. That's great. You know, All I right. guess John Ross uh, watched JR go. That's somebody who... Uh, uh, got fired for YouTubing too much, and he's doing really? well. Really? Yeah. Oh, Good. yeah. But don't uh, <laughs> to don't hard. don't do that. Don't. Do don't. You should do that. No, no, uh, no, no. Tell don't. your boss to. I can't do that, right? Sorry. <laughs> no, we'll have to blur that out. Sorry, Jake, Bye. for the extra. Edit. Thank you so much for watching. Cat slide. Dang it. <gasps> You're gonna clean the table with her. Oh, that's a good idea.
Can you do a little dust rag? Here. Here, lay down. Lay down. Lay down on your back, please. There we go. Let's get rid of the fingerprints. It does do a pretty good job. She's so cute. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you, Neelix. All right. Okay. Neelix is back. Mm-hmm.